Ethan almost forgot for a moment where he was, when the loud call of a Hadada bird outside the window reminded him to focus in class. He quickly looked around to see if anyone in class saw him drifting off into his own world, but it seemed that everyone was kind of in their own world today. It was a horrible incident and everyone dealt with it in a different way. To think that something like this would happen at their own school. These things usually only happen in movies. Ethan was so relieved that he did not see it with his own eyes, but the images he created in his vivid imagination might be even worse. He shrugged at the thought of it again. Ethan, said Teacher Greg, your turn to do your oral. He gathered his notes, cleared his throat and made his way to the front of the class. Usually, he is quite excited to present his oral, but today he really wishes he prepared a different topic. They could choose between either a scary story or a news event. He chose the scary story, not knowing that he would have to do his oral right after the scary incident at school. He took a deep breath, nodded to the teacher to start the slide presentation and began with his introduction. He could feel himself rushing over the words to get to the end. Ethan thought that he saw some children wriggling uncomfortably in their chairs and heard the teacher clearing his throat a few times. A sigh of relief escaped his lips when he finished his oral whip, and that was the last time they walked past the haunted house again. He hurried back to his desk, wiping the sweat from his forehead with the back of his hand. You did great, his friend whispered behind him. Ethan just smiled. Math period was torture, and it was a double period as well. Luckily they didn't write a test today as he thinks he would have failed with his lack of concentration. He peeked over his shoulder at Jenny, who is the brightest kid in class, but she seemed very focused as usual. His friend caught his glance as he turned his head and made a funny face. A fairly loud snort echoed through the class as Ethan suppressed a giggle. The teacher just glared over his glasses at him, and he said, Sorry sir. If you are done with pages 12 to 14, you may pack up for an early break, said Mr. Hank, but nobody was done, not even Jenny. So much for a longer break then. The rest of the day dragged along like a snail on a hot summer's day with no end in sight. At last the bell rang to free them all from a very long day and an even longer week. It was like everyone was especially elated for the weekend, more so than usual. When he got into the car, he could hear his mother's hesitance to ask the usual, how was your day, question. It was as if she wasn't sure to ask, but realized that if she didn't it would be strange. Ethan decided to put his mom's concern at ease and said, pretty good, thanks mom. It wasn't a lie, as it wasn't a bad day after all. Things are just not the same after it happened. At least it's only one month before the school holiday shoppily after then, everybody would have forgotten all about the horrible incident at school during Halloween this year. Chapter 2 The sound of the school bell announced the end of the last term. It was the best sound Ethan heard in a long time. It represented going to bed late, getting up late, watching way too much TV and playing more than enough games. Even more, the sound of the bell meant distance from the school and the horrible terrible Halloween incident. Distance that would hopefully lead to forgetting and eventually fading away from memory. He couldn't wait to put his school bag in the cupboard and change into civvies that day when he got home. Putting his school clothes in the laundry basket felt like he was throwing away the bad experiences of this last term. He felt relieved and excited for the promise of a long holiday. He decided to kick off the holiday with a movie marathon, Christmas movies, just the thing to get one's mind off of, well, everything. A few days of doing absolutely nothing passed, when he decided to check in with some of his friends. Mark was away for the holidays, lucky him. Sam will be back soon from their trip overseas, even more lucky him. Dan stayed home like him, so he sent him a chat. Wazua, sent and delivered. Nada, received. Wanna hang, sent and delivered. Sure, received. When, where, sent and delivered. My place, tomorrow at 3. Bring swimming costume, received. Cool, Saya then, sent and delivered. Thumbs up emoji received. Of course, his mom was okay with this arrangement as she really likes Dan. He is one of those good-hearted kids who likes to do things by the book. Not an outperformer, but not an underperformer either. Just a normal person, which makes him quite special as, normal, is hard to find these days. 
The swimming date was a blast, until Dan asked, Do you ever still think about it? What? asked Ethan. That, the Halloween thing, prompted Dan, not until just now, thank you very much, Dan. I was there, you know. So I struggled to forget it. Dan replied. I know and I am very sorry that you had to see that. I am also very glad I did it, so can we please not talk about it? Ethan almost begged. Sure thing. Dan responded, but it was clear that he wanted to talk about it. Ethan picked up on that, but just wasn't ready to face those monsters in his head again. What they didn't know was that Dan's younger, extremely irritating sister overheard this conversation. Well, they shouldn't be surprised, she is a master at eavesdropping as she suffers from FOMO in the highest degree. She knew about the incident, but being only seven and not having the emotional intellect to understand the extent of it, decided to prank the boys. When the boys went in for a snack, she went out and poured her whole bottle of red oily slime all over the pool. As you would know, oil and water don't mix, so yes, it looked like red blobs drifting on the water. When the boys came back out, they freaked at the sight, because it looked like blood and they had no idea where it came from. It might seem like a harmless prank now, but with the Halloween incident fresh in their minds, it just stirred up too much anxiety for the boys to handle. Dan ran to his room and shut his door. He cried like a girl, which is actually exactly what he needed to get rid of the fear he has been hiding inside him from that day. Ethan tried talking to him through the door, but realized he needed his space, so went home. So much for asking him if he could sleep over. Ethan just dragged himself from bed to the bathroom, when the doorbell rang. At first he thought to ignore it, but the ringing didn't stop, so he went downstairs to check it out. It was Dan, as sleepy as he felt a minute ago, he was suddenly wide awake. They haven't spoken since his sister's prank, so he suspected that it might be a bit awkward. He opened the door with a, Hey, Dan. Long time no see. Did you just wake up? Asked Dan. Yes, what gave it away? Asked Ethan. Dan just pointed to his hair, which made Ethan look into the mirror on the wall. It was indeed a good case of bed hair that greeted him in the mirror. Come inside. You want a soda? Ethan offered. Sure, thanks replied Dan, who dumped his backpack on the couch and followed Ethan to the kitchen. They sat at the kitchen counter drinking their sodas in dead silence. Ethan's mind was scrambling for something to say, but he could only think of things that would upset Dan. Halloween things and red slime things. At last Dan broke the silence with, so what have you been up to? The usual stuff movies, games, you know, and yourself, Ethan said as he yawned a last wake up yawn. Yeah, same sleeping late and stuff. Dan sounded like he stopped mid-sentence. Actually, I came to apologize. He said. What for? Asked Ethan. My sister's prank and my childish response. Replied Dan. Long forgotten. Bra. Ethan fibbed, but thanks anyway. Apology accepted. Do you want to play some games? That would be cool I have to be home in an hour. So let's make it a quick one. Dan confirmed as they walked back to the lounge. They sat on the chairs in front of the TV, each grabbing a controller to start the game. After they've played for about half an hour, Dan said that he should be going. He got up and grabbed his bag from the couch, when he froze as if someone poured a bucket of ice water over him. What's wrong, Dan? asked Ethan, walking towards him. Oh no, exclaimed Ethan when he saw the mess on the leather couch. I am so 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 sorry, Ethan. I clean forgot that I bought a tub of ice cream to give to you as an apology and it melted in my bag. The lid must have come off. OMW what are we going to do? Dan replied almost hysterically. Calm down. Dude, I am sure we can make a plan. Ethan tried to save the day whilst looking for his phone. Ethan googled how to clean a leather couch, while Dan got towels from the kitchen and started to dab the wet mess with it. Don't rub it, warned Ethan. They say here just to dab. Apparently we can't use water on the leather, so we need something called dry foam, and leather polish or wax. Ethan went to the cupboard in the laundry to see if they had anything like that, but he couldn't find anything. Dan, I think it will be okay. You should get home before you were in trouble, 
I will call my mother and tell her to get some of that foam and wax stuff on her way home. It was just an accident don't worry. Ethan tried to console a very upset Dan. I don't know what to say or do, Ethan. I am so sorry. Dan apologized again. I will ask my mother to call yours to talk about damages to be paid. Ethan gave Dan a fist bump as he walked back home and went inside to call his mother. He was very nervous to make the phone call and was so happy when his mother didn't answer. He decided to leave a voice note explaining everything that would give her time to work on her reaction too. About 20 minutes later his mother sent him a message asking for pictures of the damage. This concerned Ethan, as usually his mother calls this made him suspect that she was angry and didn't want to talk. Ethan sent the pictures and some screenshots of the stuff he saw on Google. The 45 minutes he had to wait for his mother to come home, felt like an eternity. In the meantime, Dan sent him a message saying he told his mom and that she was going to call Ethan's mother. When Ethan heard his mother's car turn into the driveway, he didn't even wait for her to come in, but ran outside. He started apologizing as if it was his fault, but his mom interrupted him, calm down Ethan. I am not upset, I called the insurance company, and we can claim for the damage. There is a co-payment, but Dan's mother will cover it. Everything will be okay, don't worry. Ethan was so relieved that he hugged his mother as if she was going away for a long time. Mom just smiled and savored the moment, as she missed his hugs which were very scarce lately. Ethan went inside and called Dan to tell him the whole story. He could hear that Dan was also relieved but was still apologizing all the way. Dan, I must say, a spoonful of that ice cream would have tasted very nice round about now. Laughed Ethan. Don't joke, Ethan, it's too soon. Dan laughed. The rest of the holiday was incident free and Ethan has just about forgotten about the whole Halloween thing, when a knock on the door a few days before Christmas reminded him. It was Constable Jones he was still investigating the Halloween incident and just wanted to ask a few questions. Apparently, they were just making sure there was no foul play, and that it was indeed an accident. Luckily Ethan wasn't there, so he couldn't contribute much to the investigation, but the interrogation just brought everything back to the front of his memory. A few somber days followed the visit of Constable Jones. Dan sent a message after his visit from the constable he was clearly upset by this, more so than Ethan. It is probably because Dan was there and saw the whole thing happen, so answering all the detailed questions must have been hard on him. None of them actually suspected it to be anything but an accident, so being confronted with the idea that it could have been caused by foul play was a harsh reality to deal with. Ethan decided to get the pals together for milkshakes at the deli around the corner to get Dan's mind off of the whole thing. They arranged to meet up. Ethan took his skateboard, the others arrived by bicycle. First, they spoke about Mark and Sam's holidays and all the great things they have done and seen. Then they discussed their Santa wish list for Christmas gifts. When the milkshakes arrived, they compared flavors and agreed that Dan's peanut butter choice was the clear winner. They were just about to leave, when Dan asked, did you all get a visit from Constable Jones too? Mark and Sam just nodded, followed by an uncomfortable silence. Ethan broke the silence with, well, we will know soon enough. The pals went each their own way and Ethan decided to follow Dan home, to check that he really is okay. Dan arrived a few minutes before Ethan and decided to take a swim, not knowing Ethan was following him. Ethan knocked on the door and was led by Dan's sister to the pool. Dan got out and the two boys lay on the loungers, just staring at the clouds move. Are you doing okay, Dan? asked Ethan. I'll be fine as soon as this whole investigation is over. I was just about to move on, when the constable visited and stirred things up all over again. He responded with frustration in his voice. Do you think it's possible that there was foul play involved? I don't know. I suppose it's possible, but it is also possible that it was just an accident so let's not make our own assumptions and wait for the results of the investigation. Worrying about it, won't change a thing. Ethan replied. Yeah, I suppose you were right. Dan sighed as he got up and jumped into the pool, making a huge splash all over Ethan. The boys laughed and Ethan went home. The smell of turkey braising and gingerbread men baking was lingering in the house already, when the phone rang. 
It was Constable Jones Ethan's father answered the phone. Ethan turned down the TV to try and hear what he was saying, but his dad mumbled too much. He waited eagerly for his father to finish the phone call and then jumped up to follow him down the hallway to the kitchen where his mom was cooking. That was Constable Jones, his father announced the obvious, as he said his name quite loud when he greeted him. Yes, answered his mom with anticipation in her voice. He says that after a thorough investigation and interrogation of all witnesses, it seems after all that it was only an accident. His father uttered. Ethan felt like a heavy weight was lifted from his shoulders, as if the outcome would have affected him at all. He immediately messaged Dan to ask if he heard the news. Dan responded with clear relief in his words sat last he could move on and try to forget the whole thing. The next day an article in the newspaper followed, reading, We conclude, that there was no evidence of foul play. Seeing it printed in black and white was like reading the last sentence in a book. At last, everyone could find some closure. Christmas was wonderful, but whenever is it not? All the food and family nobody could complain. Ethan was counting the days to New Year's Eve he loved the countdown to midnight and the jolly that preceded it. Since the previous year, his parents allowed him to meet up with his friends around 11 p.m. at one of their houses, to enjoy the countdown. The pals decided that this year they would gather at Dan's house as he had a pool and they wanted to swim in the dark. Ethan could barely contain himself with excitement. The days between Christmas and New Year's felt like weeks. He got some water balloons to take with to Dan's for some added fun. Finally, New Year's Eve arrived and the pals were chatting the whole day on their phones, building up to the big event. The fun at his own house started around 6 p.m. already and everybody enjoyed listening to music and eating snacks around the barbecue fire. 11 p.m. arrived at last and although he enjoyed the jolly at his own house, he couldn't wait to meet up with his friends. At Dan's house the New Year's party was in full swing as well. They were making pizzas it smelled amazing. The pals went straight to the pool and Ethan's water balloons were a hit, literally, until. Well, let's just say a wet balloon can be very slippery and when Dan's mom came outside to check up on them, she slipped on a balloon and fell into the pool. At first the boys were laughing about it, but then Dan's mother was crying. Dan rushed over and realized that she must have hurt her leg when she slipped. He couldn't help thinking of the girl on the dance floor at the Halloween party in the school auditorium. He screamed at his father to come, but the music was too loud. The boys helped his mother out of the pool and Dan ran inside to get his father. His father took his mother to the emergency rooms as her leg was really hurting. Dan and his father left with his mom, while Dan's uncle took the other pals home. The news of the incident, brought down the mood at Ethan's house and everybody was kind of just hanging around to hear from Dan's father about his mom. At about 11.45 p.m., Dan called Ethan to tell him that his mother was okay a severe sprain, but no broken bones. Everybody was relieved and the party mood improved. Ethan kept Dan on the phone so they could count down together. 3, 2, 1 Happy New Year. Everyone cheered, even on Dan's end of the phone in the hospital. Dan's mom was released with an ankle brace and some pain tablets, but nothing too serious. The same could not be said for the girl at Halloween. If only the massive paper mache pumpkin fell from the ceiling one meter to the right or the rope snapped one minute later, she would still have the use of both her legs today. Now she will be in a wheelchair for the rest of her life, because of a Halloween pumpkin that injured her spine. And so, a new year started, almost just as horrible as the previous one ended. It can only get better from here, was Dan's mother's response to the incident. Ethan thought by himself that he preferred a year that started off poorly and ended on a high note, over the previous year that started off wonderful and ended terribly. The pals couldn't wait to start school in their new grade and the promise of a good year, excited them.